I'm Palmer Ham, and today I'm gonna to be getting ready. I'm gonna be doing huge hair, huge makeup, and big PVC clothes. The first step is actually shaving the sides of my head, which I've already done. Then I apply moisturizer, then I put on primer. So without primer, everything slides. I guess I would describe my style as um, goth inspired. It's fetish inspired and it's high fashion. I pretty much only wear black. So I, I developed my style, um, I guess for the last 10 years, it's been like a very slow evolution, which has just uh, been growing ever since maybe the age of 12. I guess 12 was the age when like my parents stopped dressing me. It was quite small, it was just like wearing black, wearing bondage. And then it just kind of escalated when I moved to London and I met more colorful creatures that kind of inspired me to go like one step further. And I think growing in kind of confidence as well. Um, every, every passing year, I kind of become like a bigger person. I do bigger hair, I do bigger looks. I kind of feel more within myself to be able to do that. So I grew up in Guildford, Surrey. It was a very conservative town. Um, incredibly boring. I remember there was one moment around 16 and I was wearing um, blue jeans and a white hoodie and I was just like running to the shops and I caught my reflection in the mirror and I was so horrified at what I saw that I vowed to like never wear something like that again, which is interesting because it was more I was aware of what I didn't want to be than what I wanted to be. The next step is I use foundation. I put it on a sponge, which is damp. Because the sponge is already damp, it actually stops the foundation soaking into the sponge. It kind of creates like a, a softer finish with like uh, less inconsistencies and less streaks. So there was really like no one else around me in my hometown I could really like look up to or take any kind of like, there was no tribe there at all. And it was only through being online and through like Facebook and Instagram, could I actually see that there were like other people that were kind of just like living their lives openly and freely. And they all seemed to be based in London. I was always attracted to like goths and punks. I don't know why. Well, goth is very like multifaceted. There's so many different sides to it. I was inspired by the like first wave of goths in like the late 70s, early 80s. People like Bauhaus, Susie, Virgin Prudence the kind of fluidity in the expression, which was regardless of gender, there was like shaved heads, long hair, makeup. Any conversations about gender or sexuality were kind of almost irrelevant. There was such sexual ambiguity and I, I kind of like aspired to be that in a way, which is to be other, but to also be very sexual about it. Because the world, the world is so like used to binaries, which isn't just male or female, or top and bottom, or sub and dom, etc. <laughs> because we're always told that like opposites attract, but to not really be anything, but still be attractive, has always been the goal. It's it's a difficult moment because you're trying to like make sense of the world, and particularly yourself. I saw style as a way to kind of, in a way, ignore those questions and just start developing an identity. And then I use a uh, concealer to like cover some like gremlin things. When I first came to London, I was really desperate to uh, find these people that I'd seen images of online in magazines. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit disappointed because when you type in goth, you might come up with like runway images of Alexander McQueen or Dior stunning designs and models that are like draped in these exquisite fabrics. And actually there was kind of like a disconnect because that wasn't in the clubs, that wasn't who I was seeing anywhere. But I went to places like Slime Light and Electra Works and I found some tribe, I found some, some of my chosen family, I guess. So the next step is I draw a kind of loose outline of where I want my eye makeup to be. It's so much more fun and rewarding to get dressed up and go hang out with people. It's good to be seen, you know, but seen amongst people that you want to be seen with. So that kind of inspired me to create my own club, which is Brave. I wanted to show off the work of my friends. 
I'd like creators to come and, and feel inspired to meet other people. It had DJs, it had other performers, it had hosts. I guess I was first drawn to fetish, more so because of like the liberal environments that it exists in. To have people just being themselves and being comfortable kind of makes me comfortable. I found it increasingly difficult to exist online. We know like what will get us banned and what won't, but somehow like we still manage to like slip through the cracks there. In a way it kind of like it senses our work from like the active canon. It's a sad moment for where we are in like humanity I guess that we've handed the keys to Zuckerberg and these awful people. I'm just gonna uh, start smoking this out and blending it so it's a bit softer and I'll go over this in other colours. Documentation I think is vital in these kind of environments because it liberates and I think that liberation is important because at the moment it's, for me, it's obviously very centered around London. To not share any images, to not have any documentation, it creates elitism that is only for like the few and not for the many. Nalo is the collaboration that I do with my partner Salvia. The project's kind of manifested its way in different directions. So we did a VR project that collaborator Khan Olganir we 3D scanned our bodies and then adjusted them so they're slightly more alien-like. So it was very much designing for our avatar. The way we put ourselves across online is an avatar in itself because it's like a manipulation or a characterization of who we think we are. Okay, and now I'm just gonna blend the black a tiny bit into the brown. Now I sharpen the edges with my foundation. Yeah, so the foundation cuts through the blending and creates this very straight line. And now with a sponge with a straight edge, I'm just gonna slowly blend that out a bit. I have like a degree of responsibility to what I'm doing. When I was growing up, there wasn't really any kind of like role models or anyone else saying it's okay not to like pick a gender or pick a sexuality. There are figures like Pete Burns or Boy George, which are incredible, but the conversation was never really there. Maybe they possibly started it in their own way. There is a bit of sadness because there is like a intergenerational conflict. Even though I feel like they led the way in kind of being themselves, one by one, they've all come out with kind of like transphobic terms, you know. I'm optimistic that the next generation are gonna grow up in a time where things are a lot easier and the kind of language and discourse is already out there. Okay, now I finished my eye, so I'm gonna do my contour in now, which is on my cheeks and my jaw. I like squeeze the brush head so it's kind of flat. It goes loosely from the top of my ear in the direction of my lips. Then I'm gonna do my lips. I've gone for brown because it matches my eye. Okay, so my face is done and I'm gonna start doing my hair. It's a long process that takes around two hours, so I'm only gonna be showing you a small part of it, but it's the same process, just repeated. And going in to the root as far as possible, I squeeze it and I hold it for around 15 seconds. I move up and do the next bit. I definitely had like a peak hair moment, which is where I was doing, I would be eight foot tall with shoes and hair. I can't really do that anymore because hairspray formulas have changed that like, they're no longer glue-like, so they can't really hold huge, huge styles, which is unfortunate. I don't do the very end that's meant to be like, then it's important to spray and try and get the roots as much as possible as well. I would then go to the root and start there and just keep going. And that creates this texture, which is kind of, it molds. <laughs> Once it's in shape, I'm gonna use a hairdryer to um, put it into shape and using the jet of the hairdryer, shape it. I'm gonna go and finish this and get dressed in the other room, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, 
Okay, so now I'm dressed. I've got my PVC boots, PVC gloves, PVC top, PVC skirt, PVC cape, and my second cape. And I'm so done. It is physically quite taxing to move around, to get in cars, to get on buses, to get on train. Because I occupy so much space through hair and through clothing, I can't, I can't really fit into anything. But at the same time, I love the impracticality of it. People have like comfort clothes. My comfort is more in something where I feel myself or something where I have an attraction to it. And it's that kind of love of beauty where I feel so much more comfortable. And when I see other people doing the same thing, I'm, I kind of see what they're going through and that to me is beautiful and that is beauty.